group. Okay, so good day everyone and welcome again to another lesson in physics called uh, refraction. Alright, so in this topic we will talk about how uh, this process occurs and what makes it different from the process of reflection. Alright, so let's get this over with and we were going to answer the, the key question that we were going to answer here after the uh, at the end of the lesson is uh, how do we describe the refraction of light? Okay, so what makes this uh, process differs from reflection? Alright, so the objective that we were going to uh, we go, we are we were going to do here is or R calculate the angle of refraction using the Snell's law. Okay, so there is a some there are some computations here that will we uh, we will going to use the the cert, this this particular law that we have right here in order to compute the angle of refraction of the light ray. Next one, identify the materials that enables the light to bend at different speed. All right, so what are these materials? All right, that makes uh, uh, that makes the mat the light rays uh, bend. All right. Uh, are these materials have the same? Uh, are the are these materials allow the light to travel at the same speed, or they make uh, the light move slower when they pass or when the light pass through them? All right. Next one. Describe how total internal reflection happens. All right. So let's see what makes a uh, diamond shine. All right. Or what makes uh, the diamond glitters. All right. So. Now, uh, without further ado, so let's start with the discussion. Okay, so refraction. What is refraction? All right, when the light ray crosses one material to another, okay, so the amount it bends depend, depends on the difference of, or the difference in the index of refraction between two materials. All right, so as we talk about the index of refraction before, so index of refraction is the ratio between the speed of light in a vacuum and the speed of light in a certain material. So that is represented by, um, that is represented by a letter N in some cases. So N, right? So now, uh, if we take a look at this uh, particular diagram, so this is the refraction of air into diamond. So as you can see, so as you can see that we are, uh, the one that we have right here is uh, in the air we have it in uh, one. The index of refraction is one. So the light uh, somehow travels faster in this particular medium. Then when it enters the diamond, so what happens to this light ray? It, uh, it is bent or the light ray bends because in diamond, it has higher index of refraction compared to your air. Okay, so now uh, on the other diagram, we have here the air and water. All right, so okay. Now the water is uh, much uh, smaller in uh, the water has smaller index of refraction than the air. So what do we have right here is the light, uh, the light bends further away from the uh, center. All right. So in this case, so we have here uh, in the diamond we have the angle of refraction 28, and in water the angle of refraction is uh, 13. All right. So <clears throat> so what do we have right here? So it means that uh, it means that that uh, that the light travels faster in uh, water than in diamond. Okay, so that's how uh, that's how uh, the difference in the index of refraction works. Okay, next. Okay, as you can see in a base uh, basic school experiment, uh, basic school experiment that we have right here. When you put the straw on a water, uh, if you look as if you look this at um, <clears throat> if you look this on the side, you tend to saw the straw uh, like uh, it, the straw looks like bend. All right. When you look at it on the side, so as you can see here, uh, on the at the bottom of this uh, water, the straw uh, is bended. All right, but 
uh, actually the straw is not um, is not bended. When you pull out the straw out of the water, it is is in a straight uh, form. But when you put it in the water, it looks like it is bended away or it is bended uh, on the water. Now, what makes this uh, possible? This is uh, this particular phenomenon that we have right here. This phenomenon. So this uh, this thing that we have right here is an example of refraction. All right, next one. So the illusion, so the illusion that is created here in this particular example is uh, because of the light rays being refracted. All right, so being refracted as it passes through the water. So what happens is the image that is formed uh, at the end is uh, somehow it looks like uh, the straw is uh, the straw is cut halfway and it is bended while it is inside the water. So so when the air or when the light is refracted, it affects uh, it affects uh, how you see the object when the light passes through your eyes. All right. So in this uh, in this case, this is an example of refraction. Next one. All right. So the the materials with higher index of refraction bend the light by a large angle. So the higher the index of refraction, the more or the larger the angle of refraction there will be. So the refraction occurs when light ray cross the surface of uh, cross the surface between two materials that have different index of refraction. In our case, we have air and diamond and air and water. Okay. So as you can see here, these are the list of materials and their index or indices of refraction. So as you can see, uh, the light travels faster in the vacuum and followed by the air. So there is a small difference between how light travels in a vacuum and how light travels in air. Next one. So as the index of refraction gets increased, expect that the angle of refraction also uh, increases all right so yeah next one so what uh, what direction does the light uh, does in what direction does the light bend yeah all right so what do we have right here so pardon me for the wrong grammar that we have right here so what direction does the light bend all right, so it, it goes uh, on this part. All right, so a light ray going from a low index of refraction into a higher index of refraction tends to bend. Uh, it tends to bend towards the normal line. All right, so uh, meaning to say, if the light ray goes from low index of refraction and into the higher index of refraction, just like the the one happened between the the air and then the diamond, so the the line goes towards the normal line. Okay, so it bends towards the normal line. Whereas, it, it goes vice versa, so if the light ray goes from an object of higher index of refraction and it goes to uh, an object of lower index of refraction, for example, uh, water to air, right? So, water to air. If you look from the water and into the air, so there is a difference of uh, index of refraction there. The water has higher index of refraction than air. So what happens is it bends, uh, it bends away from the normal line. All right. So what is this normal line all about? So what do we have right here is uh, this is the normal line. Okay. So this is your normal line, and. <clears throat> Okay, when the light ray passes from air to glass, so the glass has higher uh, higher index of refraction than air, right? So the air has a uh, lower index of refraction. So what happened here is, um, wait, what happened here is the angle of refraction, all right, so the angle of refraction bends towards yeah, so bends towards this normal line. So meaning to say that this angle of refraction is near the uh, normal line that we have right here. Whereas, if the light ex uh, if the light escapes from the glass, if the light escapes from the glass, so it it will likely to be 
the angle of refraction is somehow uh, bends away from the normal line. So, this is the normal line that we have right here. So, the light rays bends away from it. So, meaning to say, if the if the light rays travels from higher index of refraction to an area or an object of lower index of refraction, this might likely occur. Okay? So, next one. Alright. Now, if the reflection has law of reflection, so it states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of uh, reflection. Now, in refraction, it's different. Alright? So, we have here the Snell's law of refraction. Now, what does this law tell us? This law tells us the relationship. So, it tells us the relationship between angles of incidence and angles of refraction. Now, together with that, so between the angles of refraction and incidence, and we can also uh, compare the relationship between the index of refraction of both materials to which the light rays passes through. Alright, so we have two different sets of materials. So meaning to say, in Snell's law, you need, uh, in Snell's law, you need two materials with... Uh, two materials with two index of refraction and we will have uh, two light uh, two angles here so one is from the angle of incidence incident ray and the other one is from the angle of refraction yeah refraction all right there we go okay so this is the formula for that so and uh angle of incident so this is the sorry so this is the uh, index of refraction yan index of refraction to which the lights uh, the lights or the light passes through or going to all right so coming from rather coming from and the other one this is the angle so the angle of incidence this is the qi so, the QI is the angle of incidence. Yeah. Next one, the N, N sub R is the, all right, is the material to which the light is being refracted. All right. So, this is the refractive material. Okay. So, again, this one is pro, the light from where the light is coming from. And the other one is from the material through which the light is uh, bending away. Right, so or being refracted, and finally we have here the Q sub R sine Q sub R, which means this is the angle of refraction in degrees. Okay, so there we go. The formula that you see here is uh, the formula of Snell's law of refraction. All right, so let's let's put a good use of this formula. All right, so let's calculate the angle of refraction in this particular problem. Okay, so the problem read uh, as a ray of light is traveling through the air is incident to the smooth surface of water at angle of 30 to the normal. All right, now here we go. Okay, so what do we have right here? So, what we have uh, here is the air passing through the water at an angle of 30 degrees. So, what is this 30 degrees? The 30 degrees is the angle of incidence. Alright, so now, calculate the angle of refraction for the ray as it enters the water. Alright, so let's take note that the water is N 1.33 and the air is 1 point or N is equal to 1.00. Alright, so let's solve. Okay, so what do we have the given, va what, what value do we have right here? Alright, so, so the incident ray, so the incident ray is, uh, or the incident or the index of material or index of refraction for the incident ray is 1.00. Okay, so that's there. Next one, uh, the the index of refraction for or the index of refraction for the refracted material or refractive material that we have right there is for the water that is one point one point thirty three. Yeah, one point thirty three. All right, so there we go. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah. Meanwhile, the angle of incidence, so the Q1, or yeah, so the Q1 is uh, 30 
degrees. All right, so let's write down the no, let's write down the Snell's law. So we have here n1. All right, so n sub uh, n sub i times the sine. Right, so times the sine uh, of q1 or q sub i is equal to n sub r sine uh, q sub. All right, so there we go. Okay, so. Pardon me for the na, for the bad writing. So uh, let's put uh, let's put down the values that we have right here. So for the n sub one, we have 1.00, 1.00. All right. So a bit like here times the sine of 30 degrees or 30 degree angle. So equals. So what is the n sub r? So for the water, that is 1.33 times uh, the sine of q sub r so we are uh, we are looking for the q sub r in this uh, problem all right so if we put this uh, if we put it this way so we can have the formula as the sine q sub r is equal to uh, 1.00 right times uh, the sine all right, the sine uh, 30 degrees. All right, over divided by 1.33. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's uh, let's find out. So what is sine of 30? That is 0 0.5. So t basically, we have 0 0.5 over 1.33. So, what is 0 0.5 over 133? So, 0.5 over 1.33. So, that will be 0. Point, all right. So, we have your 0. Point, all right. So, 0. 0.376. Okay. There we go. So, we have your 0. 0.376. So, okay. So, to solve for the angle, so we can have the angle. Okay. Angle R. So we have uh, sine inverse sine of okay inverse sine of inverse sine of zero point three seven six. All right. So what's the answer? So inverse sine. All right. So inverse sine of zero point three seven six. So that is all right. So the answer is the angle of refraction is the angle of refraction is twenty two. Point zero degrees. All right. So, uh, meaning to say that uh, the light ray will likely to be refracted at twenty two degrees away from the normal line. All right. So that's uh, right. Uh, rather, uh, rather than. Uh, uh, let me clarify. That is not a way. That is towards the normal line. Okay, so that is for this uh, sample problem. Let's solve another one. Alright, so a light ray is moving through CR9, uh, CR39 rather, at an angle of 49 degrees and exits another medium at an angle of 41 degrees. What is the index of refraction or what is the index of the second medium? Now, in this problem, we are asked to find out uh, what is the... Hey, what is the index of refraction of the second medium through which the light passes through? All right, so let's uh, let's take a look first. So the CR thirty nine here is the uh, incident. All right, so incident index of refraction. So what is the index of refraction of CR thirty nine? So CR thirty nine is one point four eight nine. Okay, or rather, uh, rather uh, we have 1.498. Uh, yeah, 1.498. So that is your index or n sub i. Next one, so we are asked to look for the n sub r, which is missing, and we have the angle, the angle of incidence. So we have 49 degrees. <laughs> All right, and the angle of refraction is uh, all right. So the angle of refraction is uh, forty-one degrees. Okay. So let's write down the formula. So n sub i. 
uh, times sine theta of incident angle is equal to sine or index of refraction of that uh, refracted or where the material or where the light refracted and sine theta of r. Alright, so let's substitute the value here. So we have uh, n sub i, we have uh, 1.498 times the sine of uh, sine of 49 degrees. Alright, next one, we have the n sub r which is missing times the sine of uh, what is this, uh, what is this angle? So the angle is uh, 41 degrees. Okay, so now if we rearrange the formula, so we have n sub r is equal to 1.498 uh, sine uh, 49 degrees over sine of 41 degrees. Alright, so let's take a look. So what is sine 49? Sine 49 is 0 0.754. 0 0.754, uh, sorry, 0 0.755 times uh, 1.498. So the answer will likely to be 1.113. Alright, so divided by, which is sine of 41, Alright, so sine of 41 is uh, 0 0.656. Alright, there we go. Then, what do we have right here? 1.13 over 0 0.656. So, the answer will be, so the index of refraction through where the light ray is being refracted is 1.72. Uh, so, index of refraction is unitless, so that's the final answer here. So, meaning to say that the, uh, that, that's, that the second medium is around 1.72 index of refraction, that's the reason why it, de uh, it deviates from 49 to 41 uh, degrees. So, meaning to say, the second medium has higher index of refraction. That's the reason why it will bend more, or it will bend. Uh, it will bend more towards the normal line. Okay. So, these are the sample problems for the uh, Snell's law of refraction. Okay. Now, when you do this trick. When you do this particular experiment that we have right here, if you put a glass rod in the vegetable oil, you can see that the, that the glass rod looks invisible inside the, so if you take a look at this one, the glass rod looks invisible inside the vegetable oil. Because vegetable oil and the glass rod, so what, uh, what is the reason behind this uh, phenomenon? Because vegetable oil and gl uh, glass, the glass rod that we have right there has the same index of refraction. That is the reason why it is, uh, if you put the glass rod, if you put this glass rod into the vegetable oil, it looks like invisible inside. So, meaning to say, it, uh, it doesn't vanish, but the glass rod is not completely refracted inside the vegetable oil. Unlike water, alright? When you put glass rod in the water, the glass rod will look like uh, uh, it is bended uh, inside the water, okay? Yeah. Now, what is total internal reflection? Now, total internal reflection happens... Uh, happens when the angle of incident at which the light begins is reflecting back to the refractive material it is called or sabihin na lang natin in this particular process it is called the critical angle now the angle to which the light goes back to the refractive material it doesn't go out is called the critical uh, angle now the total internal reflection, it happens when the angle of refraction is greater than the critical angle. So, here's how it goes. Alright. So, the refracted ray that you have right here between air and then water. Alright. 
So if it happens that it is uh, if it happens uh, that okay, so if it happens like uh, it is uh, less than 90 degrees, so the light will pass or will be refracted from that particular uh, situation. So, on the second diagram, still uh, less than 90, so the light is refracted. So, it, uh, if any object that is present on that particular area, it will look like it is bent. Yeah. Alright. So, next one. Okay. So, it, uh, if the angle of refraction is within the 90 degree angle, alright, so if you look, if you are swimming down the water and then if you look uh, upward, so it will likely to, uh, you will likely to see no uh, image or no image at all above the water because the angle of refraction is equal to the criti uh, critical angle that we have right here. But, Alright, but if the angle of refraction is greater than 90 degrees, which is the critical angle that we have right here, total internal reflection occurs. So, meaning to say, uh, meaning to say that the light ray is not refracted, it is reflected back to the back to the refractive material which in in case we have here the water now in case of diamond in case of diamond the materials or the light inside the material is being refracted all right refracted back to the refractive material which is the diamond so that's the reason why if you shine a light on the diamond it looks glittering uh it looks glittering when uh, there is a light shining on it, right? So that is total internal reflection. Now, one uh, one particular application of total internal reflection is uh, the modern way of sending data is through light. So this is called the fiber optics, right? So because, all right. So because of uh, because the light that is used to be refracted on the glass surface is uh, somehow higher than its critical angle so what happens here is the light is being reflected back again to the uh, refractive material and then it is uh, again uh, reflected inside and then being reflected again and so on and then so forth so this process is called total internal reflection now when uh when this process occur once again when this process occur uh there is no refracted ray that goes out of the material instead it is being reflected back again to the uh refractive material to where it came from okay so one example here that we have is the fiber optic cable okay so there we go now have you ever noticed when you shine a light on a prism uh, the light is being uh, separated into its uh, component colors which is the roji bib so we have here the red orange yellow green blue indigo and violet all right so Alright, so that's the reason why, uh, so this is the reason why light is being uh, being scattered at different colors. It's because of reflection, uh, not, not ref uh, reflection, rather by dispersion. Alright, so dispersion is uh, another process, but it is under refraction. Alright, so that is under refraction. So what happens here is... Uh, when the light passes through a material, when a light passes through a material, in this case, we have a tiny droplet here. It is being uh, dispersed to the point that the light from uh, being white light, it is scattered or it is dispersed or dispersed into diff its different color. So, meaning to say, uh, the refractive material separated the colors of the light from the white light rays that we have right here from the sun. Alright? Thus, producing uh, what they called rainbow. Okay? So, technically, that's how rainbow works. Alright. So, there we go. Now, let's take a look at some um, demonstrations of how uh, refraction occurs. So, in this case, we will use the 
refraction simulator that we have right here. So this is the light source. Okay, so right. So let's use white light. Now, as you can see here, now when we use glass, all right. So when we use glass, as you can see that the light is being uh, refracted when it goes inside and goes back again to its original speed when it goes outside that material. So meaning to say that the light uh, again uh, goes back to its original speed. Okay, and being slowed down when it goes inside the uh, any or this particular refractive material. For, each, uh, for this example, we have the glass. Now, let's take a look at other example. Example is the air. So, do you see any changes on the speed of uh, light when it goes through the air? Alright, so it is because that air almost have the same uh, index of refraction as the vacuum that we have here outside. Okay, so that is the air. Next one, how about the eyes? Okay, so what happens to the light as it passes through the eyes? So it is being refracted because uh, ice is a solid object. So ice is a solid object. Uh, we can conclude that the eyes have greater index of refraction than the vacuum. So what happens here is the light is being bended away or it is bent bent and it is bent away uh, and it goes back again to its, or, uh, to its original speed as it goes out of the ice. Now, let's take a look at the diamond. Now, since diamond is a solid, so it has greater index of refraction. So, what happens here is uh, the light is completely uh, refracted on this process. Now, if you put that uh, perspective, if you put the if you, if you put the diamond or if you put the light source inside the diamond, as you can see, okay, so if you put the light inside the diamond, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. there's a problem in our simulator. So as you can see, yeah, alright, so as you can see, uh, there is no, alright, so there is no or there's no light. Alright, there's no light uh, going out of the uh, diamond because this is a clear example or clear uh, demonstration of your total internal reflection. So, meaning to say that the light uh, inside the diamond is reflected back again to the refractive material. So, no light, no refractive ray that goes out again of the diamond. So... Basically, this is your refraction. This is how it works. So, if you have uh, any question regarding refraction, please do, uh, don't hesitate to ask it in the comment section. Alright, so with that, that ends up our lesson here. And I hope you did learn something from this topic that we have. Alright, so don't forget to smile alright. Alright, and that's it. Goodbye and God.